Shams of the Athletic just recently came out and dropped some wild details regarding this whole blockbuster trade that just happened with the New York Knicks. Taking a look at some of the offers the Raptors previously received from New York and how they're feeling about the acquisitions of RJ Barrett and Emmanuel quickly going forward. Why it all ended up happening and why it all ended up happening now. So lots of stuff to dive into in this video. Again, folks, thank you for 31,000 subscribers. If you're one of the over half of our viewers that aren't subscribed to the channel, definitely join the party as we continue to cover all of the latest news regarding the Toronto Raptors as things have certainly been wild over the past you know what, three days, four days, and are only going to get crazier as this team continues to sort of integrate the new players, potentially make some more moves, and everything continues to happen. But let's take a look at what Shams had to say, because he recently came out and on his uh, new show, or his Run It Back show, and had some interesting quotes. And you can watch the full thing, this is just one sort of quote, but this is the main takeaway from what he's saying, that for the Raptors, they view this as a fresh opportunity, a really a new infusion for this team. He discussed how the Raptors were sort of making decisions about what they're going to do with OG Pascal, as was widely reported over the past year and a half, and then it hit a roadblock. They said, hey, a decision has to be made on both of those guys, and one of them actually came down the wire with OG and Anobi, and it's still in flux. It's still waiting for Pascal Siakam. So that's all pretty common sense. That's pretty straightforward. The Raptors needed some new infusion of talent, some new pieces, them some things along those lines, and particularly the potential for Emmanuel quickly to break out for this Raptors team, being a starter, being a guy that, you know, was held back behind Jalen Brunson on that New York Knicks team. Manuel quickly could potentially come in here and be even more valuable, a lot more valuable for the Toronto Raptors in that starting role, and then really make this trade look like a massive W for this team. And then similar things were said about RJ Barrett coming into Toronto, his hometown, and fitting. So a lot of the stuff that was sort of mentioned there about the new infusion things and stuff from Shams is pretty straightforward. We kind of knew everything that was said regarding this, but the real interesting, the real juicy part of what Shams was saying about this deal, about this potential package that went down is what the Knicks offered last offseason because we all heard and then the roasts were getting thrown out left right and center to Masai Ujiri because some mystery team in the NBA offered the Toronto Raptors three first round picks for OG and Anobi. Now, the Knicks were obviously one of the teams that could, it could have potentially been, but some people were also saying, hey, the Memphis Grizzlies also threw some picks out there, and imagine if we had a Memphis Grizzlies first-round pick for this season with Job Morant getting suspended for the start of the year and everything, that whole mess of a situation that sort of went on that organization for this past, you know, since last year's trade deadline. Those would have been some nice assets. Well, the team that was actually offering those three first-round picks to the Toronto Raptors was the New York Knicks. And apparently what was offered was an Evan Fournier plus three first round picks to the Toronto Raptors for OG and Inobi. And I know picks are picks, but the New York Knicks draft picks that they were potentially offering up, what they have currently in their locker in terms of hoarded assets, those first round picks are really bad. They are per lots of protections that end up turning to future seconds and things along those lines. Probably most of those picks probably wouldn't convert to actual firsts within the next couple of seasons or within the seasons that they're actually supposed to. So it's, you know, not super valuable first round picks. Again, the second round pick we actually received in this deal is probably more valuable for the Toronto Raptors given it's the Detroit Pistons second round pick. So it's 31st. And then on top of it, you have more flexibility in terms of the contract. You can offer second round pick players. So again, the Raptors seem to got I'm not going to call one second round pick better draft capital than the three firsts, even with all the protections and things along those lines, but some solid draft capital and then two elite young players in the NBA with potential to really break out with the potential to really sort of one fit exactly what this Toronto Raptors team needs, fit exactly what this squad kind of needs to happen for this team. And then also just the timeline, just the age, you know, forget positional fit, just having players 23, 24 years old around your 23 year old budding star and Scotty Barnes. It just makes sense regards to timeline. Those are athletic and just last night against the Cleveland Cavaliers, you know, in that game, the guard depth, we missed this. We missed having a bit of guard depth. Schroeder, 
quickly, as well as RJ Barrett, heck, even Gary Trent Jr., who really struggled in yesterday's game, but we know is at least a competent NBA basketball player. That guard rotation can fill in for players, can shoot, can space the floor, can speed the game up. Spe oh, man, quickly and Schroeder out there on the court at the same time. That game, uh, you know, the pace of play just absolutely amps up. And then, frankly, Definitely with R.J. Barrett, and from the the vibe check, I don't want to call it something specific like that, but uh, something weird and cringy like that, but quickly also seems pretty excited to be on the Toronto Raptors squad from his interviews, from the pictures that have been taken, from the fun he was having out there on the basketball court last night with this Raptors team. I mean, he looks pumped up, and then also R.J. Barrett being home, he came out post-game again last night and discussed how, hey, being home, it's great. If you told his 12-year-old self about, hey, you're getting traded on New Year's to the Toronto Raptors. Forget what team you were on before. He'd want to skip right to this moment. RJ Barrett is pumped up to be with the Toronto Raptors. He's a young budding star that we have control over for future seasons. We also have control over Emmanuel quickly, given restricted free agency. Again, if he wants to leave, sign an offer sheet anywhere else, we can sort of match whatever deal ends up getting offered. I mean, this deal was a huge W for the Toronto Raptors, and you compare it to that Evan Fournier sort of offered pack Package. It's honestly embarrassing. It's uh, I'm happy Masai Ujiri, even though we went through a year of suffering, we went through sort of a season of just, I don't want to call it despair, but just disenchantment with this Raptors team to have it lead and culminate to a deal such as this, which we thought probably wasn't going to happen. Again, if the best deals for your players were, you know, when they had more years left on their deal, were those types of Evan Fournier plus three draft picks, we thought with only half a season left on their deal, you're probably getting less for him, but somehow Masai Ujiri ended up scavenging this ridiculous package for OG. Obviously, Precious Achua and Malachi Flynn had to be involved in what as well, but the fact that this was the pieces, these were the guys that we ended up getting, and I've seen a lot of uh, sort of flack and criticism thrown the way of Precious Achua, and I get it. He's been horrible, especially over the past month, you know, looking like very confused out there on the basketball court, looking like he's taken some steps back, but he's still a young piece that is, I think, going to provide some sort of value to the New York Knicks who need a center spot with Mitchell Robinson out for the season. Precious Achua can step in there behind Hardenstein, and you know, he spaces the floor, he can drive, he has moments where he looks pretty solid, so, I mean, he's not a nothing piece, especially given his age and how much Masai Ujiri sort of loved him, but this deal is astronomically better than the Fournier plus draft picks. I forget the three first, it all sounds better than it actually is. The Raptors got a nice package in return for this deal, and I'm pumped to see how this team goes, because we have a very tough schedule ahead of us, we got a big win against the Cleveland Cavaliers last night, and now... You know, if the Raptors can collect some massive Ws, it's going to be interesting to see how Masai Ujiri plays everything. Because, you know, two weeks ago, per people were ready for Pirtle's head. Trade him away, deal him for nothing, things along those lines. You know, Siakam's a guy people didn't want to give that extension to. And it seems like the course of action, I've been of the Pirtle, I've been back and forth on the fence with what else we did. Obviously, the big decisions are Siakam, OG, and to a lesser extent, Gary Trent Jr., but Depending on, I, I'm of the camp of extend Siakam. I've stayed in that camp. And then Pirtle's also, he doesn't space the floor. The spacing still might be a question when Pascal isn't shooting as well as he did last night against the Cleveland Cavaliers. But he's facilitating a lot better. He played some remarkable defense. Pirtle's, uh, we have him locked in long term as well. So I'm pretty pumped with how this Raptors team is looking. Again, definitely some tweaks are going to be needed, some adjustments. The roster's not perfect, particularly now in our front court depth. But. Coloco being healthy would definitely help that as well. But let me know what you guys think about all this Toronto Raptors sort of updates and news. You guys are the best to make this far. Again, subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already. I'm signing out. Cheers.